spilled coffee, lightning strikes, Windows ME, your IT department going all Oprah and getting out laptops. There are many reasons why you might want to move a license of Creo from one piece of hardware to another. In this week's video, Blaine Prout is going to show you how to move a license from one computer to another. He'll also show you how to install FlexNet and do some other license management tasks. This topic comes up all the time, so let's take a look. All right, welcome everybody to the tip of the week. My name is Blaine Prout, and I'm going to introduce to you moving a license file and then installing FlexNet. And then we're also going to cover processing a sales order number into a new license file and then reading that in. So here we go. We're up at ptc.com. And we're going to go to the upper right corner to the e-support link. If many of you are accustomed to the older interface of the web page, we'll be there in a second. There's kind of a new skin on top of it. Uh, there's some real easy to navigate buttons here. We're going to use uh, managing licenses in this tip of the week. So we go here. Uh, we, we go to license actions, advanced search. Really everything that we do is going to be done in the advanced search, so that's just kind of the theme of using this tool. Once we're here, we can look up a host ID, we can look up a sales order number. Now in this case, we're moving an existing host ID from the old laptop to the new laptop. So we just click the look up button. I've already got the host ID in place, so we'll go ahead and paste it in, and you can see that it exists here in our table, so we grab it, and then use that hardware, and then use search to add it to the work table, is what I call it. Uh, the area down below here is kind of known as the work table. In a lot of cases, you'll have more line items in your actual license than appear, so I always just hard set that to 100 so that it doesn't leave anything behind. Then what we can do is we click on the uh, Select All button, and then once we do that, it lights up the Move button for us, so then we can go ahead and move that to a, a new host ID. We have to go through and fill in all the quantities, so I go ahead and plug these in. And again, you got to watch the quantities down here. Sometimes you have to show more ent entries than uh, exist. Okay, and then we enter the new host ID here. So in that this case, I've already got that set up in my uh, window, so I'm just going to go ahead and grab that. So I'm going to copy this license file host ID and paste it into the shell and give it a new name. The engine at PTC does take some time at times to process, so you just saw that happening there. You could name it. That's a friendly name that we have for ours. I like to pick text file. That's a good suggestion. Uh, you can see it's invalid. It must be too many characters. Or space. There we go. I just named it Dell 11. That works for me, too. I'll put my name after it. All right. We can see we can tie it to a contact at the company name and enter a site ID. We have a lot of them, so I'll pick the right one. There you go. You may have multiple sites, too, so make sure you get that right. Uh, it's not critical, but it's nice for you to manage your licenses as time goes on. Then we click Move License, and the interface brings up an install uh, deinstallation agreement. This basically, in long terms, it, it, you could read it all out, but it basically says you have 30 days to uninstall this once you click OK. So there is a grace period for cutover, so if you want to test a new machine or something, this is a good way to do it. And again, we wait for the PTC site to accomplish the move. And the outcome of this, there will be an email in my inbox that will have the new license file um, there and ready for us when it's complete. Okay, we're going to jump ahead here. Now we're going to pretend that the license file has arrived. And it will come in a form like this. You'll see an email with two license files attached to it. It's a little confusing, but I'll make it more clear for you here. Uh, 
the one on the left is the normal one, the one on the right has the word standard in it. The reason PTC sends two license files still to this day is for the customer to choose whether they want to have borrowing enabled or borrowing disabled. So if you want to disable borrowing, you use the standard one, but 90% or more customers choose to have the borrowing license. So we, we take this one and save it out to our disk. I'm going to put it in my desktop so it's easy to find. Then we run the installer for FlexNet. This assumes that you've already downloaded it. Um, you can see that I've had a, I had a zip here. I copied that zip uh, into my software folder and extracted it. And now I can then go ahead and run that setup utility. So I go ahead and run the setup utility. Check the box, read the agreement, make sure that's you're in agreement with that. And we'd simply drag and drop the file onto the source box. It's a confusing screen because it would lead you to believe that using the simple entry would be the best way to go, but that's the honestly the not the best way to go. You'll end up in, in uh, IT trouble if you go that route. So if you follow our lead here, this is the best way to do it. You're going to drag and drop your license file onto that source box. So I'm going to reposition my screen here so I can do that. So on the left, I'll locate my license file that I've saved out. And drag it onto the source box. And when we do that, it says installing license server. You can see it says that there. And then it should say starting. And then it should say available when it's complete. Usually it takes about one minute for that process to complete. If it takes longer than that, something's gone wrong. There we go, it says available, and we click finish. And that's moving a license and installing FlexNet. Now we're going to walk through a sales order number process uh, at ptc.com. So we're going to return to the page. You can see it's still trying to do my move here. We'll manage licenses. And we'll process a new sales order number. Now this is a little different because there's quick licensing on the home page. But it brings you back to the, to the license page anyway. So we could, we could key in the sales order number if we knew it. In this case, I don't know it. So I'm going to teach you a way to find it and learn it. So you'll learn how to locate it yourself. So again, the theme here is advanced search, like I mentioned in the beginning. We can just do a lookup and take the last one, which is usually the, the uh, numeric order. It's going to show you all of them that you've ever purchased in your uh, company's history. In this case, this was our last one, so I'm just going to pick the last one and use this as an example. So now I've grabbed the sales order number and... Uh, added it to the table here and you can see it's got some advanced uh, XMA tools inside of it. You can expand it to see what's inside of it. You pick it and then you say install. You walk through the same process we did before. You can take all five and put them on the host ID of your choosing or you can take one at a time and put them on each of five host IDs. So there's multiple ways to kind of fill in that story problem. In this case for simplicity I'll just do them all. We would put in the host ID here I'm not going to actually complete that because I don't want to actually process this one, but you can get the point. So we'd put the host ID in here, click install, walk through the similar steps with the license agreement, and then you'd also get a new license file in your inbox. So that concludes the presentation. Thank you. I hope this tip helped. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and give us a like. If you have any questions or comments, drop them in the comments area below. I'll talk to you soon.